it's clear down to maybe four feet, and then there is a layer of algae all over everything. There's a fair number of uh, underwater springs, and you can feel them. I know the city of Prairie Lake put in an ordinance for building permits on the lake. Uh, how is the carp assessment done? People need to be educated. And there are people who just simply do not take care of their leaves. And the city had to pay a huge amount of money extra to get rid of it. I don't think a lot of people understand what the best practice would be. You know, the community here, there's a, just the obvious recognition of, of its namesake, you know, for Prior Lake, that, you know, this is central to who they are. It's certainly then appropriate that people are getting as active as they are with respect to their concerns and also trying to make a difference. Part of why the Watershed District was formed, they wanted protection for their lake system. We all live in a watershed of some size or scale and the definition of a watershed would be the land area that is surrounding the lake that ultimately drains to it. Water drops here and flows down this direction, hits Spring Lake. There's an outlet that goes from Spring to Upper Prior and then Upper Prior discharges water to Lower Prior. This is an overview of, of the Prior Lake Spring Lead water area. From here about out all drains down into that. And this is predominantly agricultural. This is called Upper Prior Lake. This system is called Lower Prior. And if you take the colored area, the green, we go down to this line here. So we have under our jurisdiction about 40, five or six square miles. The winter, 2010-2011, uh, was the third snowiest winter on record. And that was the first full year that it was in place. There was no outlet structure at all. Uh, we would have saw record levels on the lake. If it got high enough, it would go over Highway 13 uh, into the Target parking lot. <laughs> Property owners like Larry Rudell here uh, was certainly anticipating, and so do we, that the water level was going to go higher. The water never uh, came close to entering uh, our yard this year or, or damaging our home. It was uh, superb. This is a much better engineered unit than what was first put in. The fact that this structure is more efficient, it allows more water in sooner at those early stages of, the, uh, of elevation above 902.5 feet. We put it to the test the very first year it was in operation and, and it just uh, did uh, uh, just superbly. We would have been in terrible uh, shape if it hadn't been for the, the functioning of this unit. The structure itself is probably you know, just under a quarter million dollars by the time we get done building it. Had the structure not been here, we looked at the, the number of properties that would have been flooded, you know, in whole or in part, and we were well in excess of $100 million of property damage that would have occurred. If we looked at then the potential damage of uh, infrastructure, probably been another $100 million or, or more potentially. That public infrastructure, public investment uh, into the outlet structure itself had a big payoff just, in, just last year alone. It's a good investment for, for the public. Good afternoon, Watershed District. Uh, we get, of course, a lot of interested calls, whether the lake level is too low or the lake level is too high. There's often the perception that, that uh, we are turning on pumps or anything like that. That is not at all the case. This pipe was connected to a, a natural channel. It's about a half a mile, you know, until it goes across 21 over to Jeffers Pond. Uh, we maintain and manage that channel system down to the Minnesota River. There are four cooperators, the City of Prior Lake, the Metwakan and Sioux Community, the City of Shakopee, and the Watershed District. How far are we from the Minnesota River at this point? How's the crow flies? Probably six miles. 